All right, Nolan. I think it's we're live and popping, baby. Right on. So listen, guys, right off the bat, <clears throat> this is something that me and Nolan have been wanting to do for uh, a while now. And uh, it's a little different than what we usually talk about. It's a passion that both of us um, have. And we're actually going to talk about, I feel like the golden age of boxing. I think it's behind us. You got a lot of uh, people that, you know, they're fighting UFC guys, they're fighting YouTube guys, and it's just not what it used to be. And I may be, you know, Nolan might have a different opinion about it than I do. I just, I don't know. To me, the 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 the, the real boxing has has kind of passed this. And you know, you know, boxing eras change, you know, throughout time since boxing started. So I think it'd be a great, uh, at least for me and Nolan, I think it'd be a great uh, live for us to talk a little bit about boxing and just um, go back to a time. And we're going to talk about the present too, but just go back to a time when it was really, really a huge thing. Um, I know my dad was a very big boxing fan. My uncle was a boxer in Cuba. Um, I did a little boxing, nothing, you know, in terms of professional, but I had a cousin that was in the Golden Gloves and he used to train me. I know Nolan, <clears throat> he probably took it much further than I did and, and did some boxing. Um, he actually wanted to go professional at one time and I'm sure that he'll go into that too. But I think it's a really, really good um, subject that not really me many people go into. So I think that uh, I think it's going to be good. Um, I made some notes because there's a lot of we're we're, we're going to uh, we're going to um, zero in because there's so many different boxing uh, classes that great fighters have fought, but we're going to concentrate on the middleweights. And I want to say real quick to uh, David Pacheco, how you doing, man? Paul, thanks for coming in. Uncle Brian, thanks, guys, for coming in. And hopefully you enjoy this. It's a little different, like I said. We're not talking about the usual subject, but I think it's something that most people that are me and Nolan's age um, and older and younger uh, – can relate to because boxing was a big thing when I was growing up. Um, it was very popular. You had the Tyson era in the 80s. Before that, in the 70s, you had Muhammad Ali. Um, and like I said, we're going to touch with the middleweights from the time. I know Nolan is a, is a historian in terms of uh, boxers all the way from the 30s to present day. But I, me, personally, I concentrate on the 80s because that's what I grew up with. And that's what, um, that's when I was really into boxing. And uh, there was, there wasn't a fight that I didn't watch, that I didn't enjoy, that I, it was, it was always a great time, I feel, that has gone past us. So, and you know, I, I'm not taking anything away from you know the boxers of today but it's just me i maybe i'm getting older but i think it's just uh i don't know i guess call it nostalgia whatever you want but i just uh i'm eager to talk about um you know my favorite fighters from back in the day and i know nolan has a bunch of them we've talked about it at length privately so I figured maybe we can do it uh, on a live and uh, people might enjoy it, you know? And uh, if they do, if we get a good response, we'll go into heavyweights, we'll go into uh, lightweights, you know, and, and, and expand on it. But that's up to you guys. So um, <laughs> I don't really know how to start this, but uh, uh, I guess the best thing would be is to see who, in terms of middleweight, uh, Nolan, you give your your uh, Up, guys. your opinion 
of who is your favorite middleweight, and I'll give you mine, and then I guess we'll take it from there. Okay, no, that, that works. Um, well, as of recently, like the last 10 years, there's been two great middleweight fighters. Um, one is Canelo Alvarez of Mexico. Um, he's pretty big name, even in like U.S. Like, most people know who he is because he's the redheaded Mexican. He's got freckles mm -hmm. and everything. And uh, I think the first time I watched him fight, he was 19 and he already had like 40 fights uh, as a pro. I think he probably went uh, pro in Mexico at 15 years old or something. And um, you watch him fight. He's a brilliant fighter. And I would say, I'm not going to put him in my top 10 list, but I would say he would give any guys in anyone's top 10 list a damn good run for their money. The only bad thing about him is I'd say he takes, sometimes he takes rounds off. Like, um, okay. you know what I mean? Sometimes he's inactive in a round. That's the only thing I can really say bad about him. He's fast. He can, has, you know, he can do everything. He can bang on the inside. He can punch. He can take a punch. Um, yeah, great fighter. And another guy from the last, he's kind of, I think he might be retired now, is um, Gennady Glovkin of Kazakhstan. And he was like, a, he had 300 some amateur fights before he even went professional. And he was dodged kind of heavy when he was up and coming. And eventually those two fought. And the first fight was a draw. I thought the Kazakhstan guy won. Yeah. And they had uh, a second fight. And Canelo won that. And I thought he did too, just by a round or two. And I think what happened is Glovkin, the Kazakhstan guy, kind of got a year or two older, like past prime, where Canelo was coming into his prime. And then they had a third fight, and it was a blowout. Uh, Canelo whooped him. But... Um, yeah, there's so many to, you, you know, to there's it's hard to have a top guy, but some of the top guys, like I would say Marvin Hagler, would be definitely one of my tops. And yeah, uh, there's a lot of great fighters, man, and they're all hey, unique. The, the the best, but you know Marvin Hagler from that era, you you like so much, um, very dominant fighter. I like. I'm also kind of particular to that kind of style. Um, I'm not a big fan of like uh, uh, Leonard, for instance. You know, kind of yeah, the more. I'm not a big fan. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong; he's a very skilled athlete, and he's obviously very good at what he does. But uh, Marvin Hagler, I kind of liked his. You know, he was a he was a guy that could he could box, but he was also extremely durable. Like when him and Tommy Hearns fought, they both you know he, Hearns landed some big big leather on uh, Hagler and Hagler landed some back and Tommy Hearns didn't take it as well as Hagler did. Like Hagler was tough. And actually, no, Hagler, yeah. Hagler is from New Jersey. He's from Newark, New Jersey. Or yeah. He was a uh, construction worker coming up. He had nothing given to him. He was always kind of, yeah, no, he was... you know, he always got kind of the shit end of the stick. And uh, one, of the, one of the toughest fighters I feel in that division uh, historically, uh, Marvin Hagler was he had a, a chin made of mortar, yeah, big head, you, you know, know. Big, 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 yeah. Head. yeah, he was, you know, he, he had a good right hand, um, he, he was good in defense, but he just he just had an iron chin, and yeah, he just, uh, yeah. Well, I think that I think he that worked that the, like, I, you know, I, he was the kind of guy you could tell that put the work in before a fight like he he trained like he was it was life or death he, he, like, yeah I, I think that he got caught at a bad time when the hype of boxing really came into its own in the 80s and you know you had your Sugar Ray Leonard's you had yeah. you know the Hearns and this and that and he was I, I really I feel he was a better boxer than Sugar Ray Leonard and a yeah, lot of people I, might might not uh, agree with me, and you know everybody has their opinion. Yeah. Um. But um. You know. I I, I told Nolan this uh, a funny story that there's this comedian from New Jersey, and and uh, he talks about the Tommy Hearns uh, marvelous Marvin Hagler uh, fight, and uh, 
you know, back then it was closed circuit TV. You couldn't get it on, you know, it wasn't like HBO, like in the late eighties that you could, you know, watch it. And, um, he tells this story how they had to go to a bar and they had to pay like $50 to, to go into the, uh, cover charge. Yeah. Yeah. To watch the closed circuit TV, which is, you know, that's something that most people don't even know what the hell that is anymore. (laughs) And, uh, his father, him and his father they went and uh watched the uh, the fight and if you watch that fight um Hagler just took tommy hearns apart because tommy hearns was he was a great boxer he had great reach he was fast he had a good a good right hand but he had a glass he was, jaw. He was, yeah he was there i think they're both southpaws tommy yes. hearns, okay yeah yeah, the, yeah he was but, a hell of a puncher Tommy Hearns, hell of a punch. Yeah, he had a great punch, great reach, yeah. but he just could not take a punch to save his life. Yeah, and a lot of guys with that build, I'm not saying all, but a lot of guys with that very lanky build, you know, kind of, they got long arms, but they also got a long neck, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, kind of small head where, you know, Hagler, everything shorter and kind of like a bull. Yeah, and, and, and listen, everybody... I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people, you hit them the right way, they're going to go down. Yeah. You know, I don't care how big they are. I don't care this, that, and the other. You, you, having a freaking cast iron jaw, with I, which I think that Hagler was one of those guys. Yeah, he was. That had a, a, a much above average jaw than yeah. most guys. Um you know, it, it's it, it's if you can't hit a guy the right way, he's gonna go down like a ton of bricks. Yeah. But you know, Hagler was a really strong guy, and I think that a lot of at that time, um, with uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, the whole hype with him, and uh, you know the flurries that he used to do, you know, in the last thirty Flash. seconds to win yeah. a round. Flash, yeah, flashy fighter. Yeah. 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 I wasn't a fan of Sugar Ray Leonard just for that because he retired a bunch of times. He didn't put the time in. He didn't, you know, he doesn't have the record that a lot of people have. He's got a lot of wins, but I just feel that he wasn't the um, taking the hard road like a, a Hagler, yeah. like a Duran that really freaking put the time into box and would fight anybody. You know, he didn't pick and choose his, his fights like, like uh, you know, Leonard did. Yeah. Leonard, I think, retired like four times in the eight. Yeah, what happened there with Hagler, because when Hagler was top dog, he wanted Leonard. And Leonard mm-hmm. kind of dodged him, and then Leonard said, I retired. And Floyd Mayweather took a – he he took a page out of Leonard's book, like what – because they both did the same sh- shit. So Leonard says he's retired. You know, everyone thinks he's retired. A guy like Leonard, I don't think – I don't know much about his personal – he was like, waiting for the payday. I yeah, think. but I don't I, think he was I like think. the partying type sitting on the couch. Even though he's retired, he's, you know, he's uh, probably in the gym every single day. You know, he's staying in shape, just like he did when he was boxing. And he's watching Hagler, and Hagler's fighting, 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 fighting. And that takes, you know, every fight takes a notch out of you, right? Yeah. So then when he sees Hagler coming down, you know, when he sees him not peaking anymore and he's coming back down, he comes out of retirement and says, oh, I'll fight you now. Yeah. So they fought, and Hagler's going forward the whole fight. And, you know, Leonard's running, and Hagler's saying to him, fight me, you bitch, fight me, you bitch. And yeah. uh, he ran away from corner, him. I think his corner man would go, 30 seconds. And then uh, Leonard would come in and, you know, do some little flashy. Yeah, he did a flurry. Punches, and, uh you know, steal the round more or less. Because, you know, it's a trick. The judges are going to, re- if there's not much happening in the round, they're going to remember the end of it where, yeah. you know, he didn't yeah. do anything, but he just pitter-pattered. And then I think it was a split decision. And uh, they gave it to Leonard. And then Hagler threw his boxing gloves in the garbage and retired. And uh, he never came back. But uh, actually, Marvin Hagler... He passed away, I think, a year or two ago, and I I was very yeah. surprised. I don't know what happened because he looked great for his, you know, for his age. He almost looked the same as he did when he fought. Like he didn't look like an old man, and he had his wits with him. Like you know, he didn't slur his words. 
Yeah, he no, was, uh, he, was in, he was in great shape. Yeah, yeah when you know, I found it, out he passed, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was COVID. I know it was during that time. Um, yeah, I have no idea. I don't but know, but I was very surprised. To see I was him. very surprised. Yeah, because like I say, he looked excellent. Yeah, no, I, 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 uh, I got a lot of respect for Hagler because Hagler, um, and I, like I told you, you know, I'm going to be a little biased. I'm a big Roberto Duran fan. Yeah, My father was a Dur- Roberto Duran fan, and I'm going to get into, you know, um, more of him. Um, but, um, you know, Hagler didn't step down from anybody. He fought whoever it was. and. Yeah. He fought. He fought Hearns. He fought Leonard. He fought Duran. He beat all those guys. Yeah. Uh, the only one that he didn't beat was was Leonard. But again, we talk about how Leonard wouldn't fight him. Leonard would run away from from him. He outboxed him, but he didn't step toe to toe with Hagler. Right, and Hagler was the champ. And if you're gonna take his belt, you better make it known that you won the yeah, fight. You right? better take it. Yeah, you better yeah. take it to to Hagler and 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 take it away from him. You know, but that's one of the things of boxing too. You know, there's a lot of, you know, it depends on the judge. It depends on the 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 type of boxing, where it is, how much the purse is, what's the next fight. I mean, there's so many different. That's one of the beauties about boxing is just. It's not black and white, you know. I've seen many a fight that have been robbed, <clears throat> that fighters have been robbed from fighting a good fight, and they just did just got robbed. You know, um, you know, it, it depends on who you're fighting. I, I've seen Julio Cesar Chavez, you know, win a fight, and the guy brought it to him, and he just just won just because either the judge was, you know, depending on where he was from, or you know this that the other there's just so many so many things that go into boxing and i think that's one of the things that made it great but also sometimes you know people get robbed you know depending on the venue depending on oh, for sure. where they're fighting you know it, you know fighting in jersey is different than fighting in, in uh in las vegas um fighting in las vegas is different than fighting out of the country there's just so many different things that go into boxing that it's just part of the dynamic that makes it great, but also can take away from it. From you know, boxers have a lot of boxers have been robbed. Right. So I think you when know, Hagler, Hagler now, I just seen Brian put something up, and he, he fought an Italian guy. He got his belt from Antifermo or something. I think his name was. I forget his. Uh, but that's who I, Hagler got his belt from, and I think the first fight it was a draw or something, and it was a. Definitely a ripoff. Like Hagler destroyed him, and then in the second one, I think Hagler stopped him quite early. But yeah, uh, no, Hagler. Hagler was one of the yeah toughest. Vito Antifermo. Yeah, Vito Antifermo. Uncle Brian knows. Yeah, one of the toughest, toughest guys. And I'm talking like old school, getting up at three in the morning, running ten miles. Uh, old school boxing was Hagler. Hagler, you had you had to give him a bunch of respect. I mean, he, I, I want to say, I wrote down, I think he had, let's see, he was 62 and three. He had 52 knockouts. Um, you know, the last time that he fought was against Sugar Ray Leonard. Um, and again, you know, a lot of people were fans of Sugar Ray Leonard. Me personally, I was not a fan of Sugar Ray Leonard. Neither. Just because I felt that he picked and chose who he fought, he retired and he dodged people when they wanted to fight him, and and he was all about the hype and the and the paycheck. Mm-hmm. He played boxing so, like a chess game. You know, he yeah. made his moves when they're right time. And there can be people that that respect that. And you know, I'm not mad at you if you do, but I'm just saying, listen, get into the ring, see who who's better at whatever given time in their peak, and I think that. I think that Sugar Ray Leonard picked his fights depending on the time, depending on the fighter, if he was in his prime, if he was past his prime, or whatever was um, beneficial to him. Yeah. You know, and hey, listen, you can call that a smart fighter. You can call that 
a, you know, a fight dodger, whatever you want. You know, that's that's the thing with with boxing. There's no right or wrong. We can only, you know, um, reminisce and and just take the fighter for what he is and the numbers that he put up during his time when he was prime. Uncle Brian just uh, said somebody, Alexis Arguello, with the explosive. Great fighter, great fighter. Explosive That's thin man. One, in my Rogue, yeah. one of my favorites. Um, and he did lose to Aaron Pryor. It was late. It was like 13th round or something. But Aaron Pryor was a very greasy individual, and so was his corner man. And they were giving him something in the corner. I don't know if they had meth or coke or something because his corner man, he ended up getting banned from boxing for loading gloves. Oh, ripping the horse hair out of gloves. Um, Same guy that uh, that that um, uh, black guy. I don't know where he's from. Uh, Panama. Panama, yeah, Panama Lewis. That's his Panama name. Panama Lewis. That yeah, piece of shit. If you yeah, watch that the guy fight, was he crooked was as the day is long. Like, yep. No, no, the 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 bottle with the tape. He put tape around it. The one I mix. Yeah, yeah the one I mix. Yeah, 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 what do you mix? Water with water. Like a friggin', you know, cyborg. And Alexis Arguello is cracking him on the head, and you know, you hit, you hit Alexis. Alexis Arguello hits you. You don't, you don't keep coming like that. His head would snap back, look at the roof, and just keep coming at him like, in yeah. unreal. No, Alexis Arguello, and I can tell you, this is something that my dad used to say. Alexis Arguello was a real boxer. I oh, mean, yeah. he he was a. He wasn't a fighter. He wasn't a puncher. He was a boxer. He would outwit you with his mind and his skills. He was a different type of fighter. He was more of a uh, a fighter that um, he had great skill. He had a great mind for boxing, but he didn't have. He, he had a great. He, he had great hands. He had a yeah. great jab. He had very, a great right hand. Very long reach. Yeah. Yeah, but he wasn't like a Tyson that would come in and just want to destroy you. He would outbox you. And that was one of the great things of Alexis Arguello. And um, <clears throat> Aaron Pryor was more of a fighter in terms of a, a puncher. Right. But he was a great he was a great boxer also. But <clears throat> it, it was it, uh, that, that, that matchup, it, one of the great matchups of, of that time. I feel, um, and guys tell me, you know, how you feel, but I just think that Alexis Arguello was just, he had, he had a, a lot of heart. He had, I, I, you know, I, I think that he had a lot of heart. He had a lot of, uh, skill. He was, he was a, a thinker's boxer and, you know, Nolan, tell me, you know, what you think, um, you know, when he passed away, oh yeah, Boom Boom Mancini. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I kind of feel that um, that was one of the great matchups of that time was uh, was um, Alexis Arguello and, and Aaron Pryor. And if you see Aaron Pryor today, you know, it, it's sad how much boxing. And that's one of the things, too, that I'd like to get into, too, that a lot of boxers, um, there's boxers that have fought, fought 50, under 50 uh under 50 fights and they can't they can't they can't complete a, a full sentence but you got boxers that have fought almost 200 fights and they were you know clear as the the day is long um you know yeah <laughs> it's i guess it's just you know uh, there's a there's a type of boxer that takes a lot of punishment to win and there's a boxer that takes very little punishment to win yeah and you know it's just their there's style so many, there's so many variables with that i'd say the biggest one is guys staying around far past their prime fighting for money not for passion of the sport like a lot of guys yeah that are and missing, they've all done that yeah like a lot of guys that um they fight for the money you know they're like slurring their words now could have got out a few years before when they should have before they went downhill and uh and uh you know you know had money and their brains but so many you know they know they blew their money as fast as it was coming in um 
they started to go a lot of boxers they yeah. said oh i need a couple more paydays and they kept fighting and you know their name kept them in the kind of up there you know like for instance shane mosley i love shane mosley i've always liked shane mosley shane mosley great fighter shane mosley is now he used to be extremely intelligent he's slurring his words a bit and he was fighting top level guys when he was 40 years old like he fought that canelo alvarez i talked about earlier he fought manny pacquiao he fought all these guys and he was giving them a good run for their money and this is when he was you know 40 years old like way past his prime like his prime shane mosley was from 10 years before that when he was fighting oscar de la Hoya. and yeah. he's a guy that could have got out long before he did and he made shit loads of money and he would have had his wits but he stuck in there too long and he was a tough tough guy shane mosley like uh you know he could he could take a punch with the best of them and uh he was good at everything but yeah just one of those things a lot of guys stick around too long yeah, like I'll give you an example. Like Bernard Hopkins, mm -hmm. that dude was a freak of nature, man. That yeah, that guy years old, still fighting, yeah, yeah, and you know, and still had skill. He wasn't he was he wasn't making a fool out of himself in the ring. No, he you was know? very smart. Uh, <laughs> very smart fighter, very good fighter, uh, he, and very he, level headed. A lot of people think that he his, was. Uh, he made up for his, like his old age with brains. I didn't yes. think. He kind of, I didn't really ever like his style. He kind of, you know, hit and hold. That was kind of his thing. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, he kind of sit at a distance and then come in and, you know, then clinch and land a few rabbit punches or something or, you know, some shots to the kidneys from the other side of the referee or whatever. And that's just what he'd do. But at the same time, even though he was fighting at an old age, he's not a guy that took many punches in his career. He just... Yeah. Had such and, a style. And, he didn't take many shots. And compared to the old boxers, the old the old boxers that I'm talking like boxers like Rob, uh, Roberto Duran, you know, uh, Roberto Duran, he fought from 1968 till 2001, yeah. and he had almost 200 fights. Yeah. And then you guys got like Sugar Ray Robinson. Yeah. He's got he has I think he has 174 fights. You're talking a lot of rounds, a lot of freaking punches, a lot of beatings. A lot of these younger guys did not do that. No. <laughs> and I don't think that they could. I think weight cutting has something to do with brain damage now, too, because everyone's trying to be bigger, right? Like, if yeah. you and me were to fight at a light heavyweight at 175 pounds, I'm going to be try to cut more weight than you and be 195 pounds on – fight night all well, these guys that lose so much weight like i'm talking more than 10 pounds 15 almost 20 pounds they lose they dehydrate themselves so much for weigh-in that they lose the water that's around their brain and, and i think they get weak I yes feel like they get and i feel weak. when they rehydrate even though they look fine i don't think all the fluid around their brain is back and it doesn't cushion the blow as well that's uh that's my thoughts because some of the weight cutting is getting ridiculous. Like, uh... well, that was one of the things that I wanted to touch with Roberto Duran. Like, Roberto Duran, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nolan, he is the only boxer that has won a champion in four different weight classes. No, Manny Pacquiao, the Filipino, he has eight. He's got eight. Okay, yeah. there you go. There you go. There you yeah, go. There you go. is an unbelievable fighter. Like, no, he's a great fighter. I can't yeah, I, I, away from he him. was, and he was exciting to watch. Like, uh, very oh, super style. fast fucking boxer. Yeah, fast, but he had you know he didn't have long arms or nothing, and he'd be on the outside kind of bouncing, and he'd come in. He's like a fucking machine gun. He'd come in and his hands pop, 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 and then he'd spin and give you an angle, and he was just unreal. He just destroyed guys. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the thing. You, you know, you got your favorite boxer, and you think more about it. And no, you're true. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. But <clears throat> I gotta give a lot of credit to Duran because he did was champion in four different weight classes, yeah. and oh, that's he exactly. was one weight class is enough. You know, doing pretty good. Never mind four. So yeah, and and he was he was boxing 16 years before he got knocked out by um, by Hearns. Um, it was either Hagler or Hearns. No, was it? I want to say no, Hagler when he fought Hagler, 
And if people go back and watch that fight, um, Duran was was winning. Yeah, he was winning. He was winning that. He was winning that 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 fight. Yeah. And Hagler won those last two rounds, and he he kind of took a split decision. But there was going into the thirteenth round, yeah. the, the three the three uh, judges had um, Duran leading. And listen, I'm not going to say that Duran was invincible when he was when he first started in the early seventies. I mean, he knocked everybody that was, that came in front of him. You know, but, you know, you're talking about a guy that was boxing 15, 16 years, you know, and and boxed until he was damn near 50 years old. But uh, he he was they called him hands of stone for a reason. You know, he he was a a great boxer, but, you know, he got his ass whooped a couple of times, you know, when he had that no moss fight against um, um, Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray Leonard. Um, maybe that's why I don't like Sugar Ray Leonard a lot. Probably, but, uh, but still. Yeah. I can but, see I why. mean, if you compare both both of their uh, records, I mean, even when even when um even when Hagler <laughs> and uh Duran fought, people don't realize um Duran had knocked out almost eighty people, over twenty more people than Hagler, and he had fought over twenty more yeah. fights than than Hagler. And he, so, I think he was a lightweight when he started out. Yeah, he was one thirty-five. When he was younger, he was a lightweight. So you know, you got to take into consideration the boxer, the era, the fighter, um, who he fought, when he fought. You know, there's just so many different di- dynamics, and that's I think that's what makes boxing great because you can you can analyze it and um, you know. Uh, Debated to death, but I really feel that there's certain boxers that stand out no matter what era they are, no matter what uh, time, who they fought, it doesn't matter. I really feel that their um, their record stands, their championship stands. I mean, it, how can you deny that Sugar Ray Robinson isn't one of the greatest middleweight fighters of all time? Right. I'd say he's yeah. the best all-around fighter of all time. Yeah, and his, and his record shows. I mean, I I even wrote it down just just to make sure. I mean, he he fought 174 fights. Well, I think he fought Jake Lamotta six times, <laughs> sir, five or six times. Yeah, Lamotta got him, I think, once. Over 25 years, and he knocked out his wins. 109 were over were knocked out yeah. i mean you know when you got that kind of record <laughs> you can't you really can't um deny how great a fighter he was you know and, and i really think that that's one of the great things that you know there's only so much that you can talk about this and that but when you see the numbers you see the the the, the durability i mean you know you, you just got to give it to certain fighters yeah. And I think so, he's one of them. Yeah, there was a guy, I'd say the best middleweight of all time. Um was from the 20s, and his name was Harry Greb, the Pittsburgh Windmill. And uh, he was an unbelievable fighter. Like, I, I don't know, he fought like 30, 30 times in one year. And uh, I think he had a couple hundred pro fights. And he also did very good at light heavyweight. And uh, he ended up dying at about 30 years old. He had so much scar tissue in his nose, they did an operation on him trying to remove it. And he ended up dying when they operated on him. I don't know if they hit a artery or what happened, but uh, I think he was also blind in one eye. But a lot of people would say that this Harry Greb guy um, was the best middleweight of all time including like the uh, original guy from ring magazine the rights ring magazine and his record there's no film of him which is weird um but uh you just look at his record and what he did he must have been great and i know jack dempsey in the 20s the heavyweight champ brought him in for sparring when he was fighting this guy named gene tunney that was a slick boxer yeah, Gene Tunney was a great yeah, fighter. Yeah, Gene Tunney was unbelievable and uh, very underrated, actually. But 
so he brought in Harry Greb to kind of um, imitate Honey, Tunney because he had a similar style. And Tunney and him actually fought twice. And the first one was a draw. And Tunney ended up beating him in the rematch because Tunney was an unbelievably smart man. But uh, they had the press there and everything. And Harry Greb was out boxing Dempsey. Dempsey's swinging, trying to take his head off. And he's missing every shot because he's so slick, that little bugger. And Dempsey's yeah. getting pissed off because he's, you know, the press is there, everyone's there, all these uh, writers and stuff are there. And uh, Harry Greb was lighting him up. And then I guess a couple weeks later, he told Harry Greb to come in again. And this time he was going to try and flap him in front of everybody. And uh, they brought him in and the same thing happened. But it's one of those things, if they would have fought, like, sure, it was only sparring and everything. All Dempsey would have had to do, and, you know, if it, it was scheduled for 15, 20 rounds, is land one left hook, and that would have been it for him. So if they really fought, it could have been a different different story. But it's just, uh, it's just neat how a smaller man that's really slick can give a bigger man a good go until he gets gets uh, caught obviously but yeah no listen <laughs> i i've been around enough to know that you know any any guy with with a, you land a punch the right way you're gonna you're gonna and if you have enough force behind it you're gonna you're gonna fuck somebody up yeah you like, know um, it, joe lewis for instance like joe lewis i'd say is the best heavyweight of all time and I, I, i'd have to agree to yeah, yeah. like he was heavyweight champ for 12 years and it would have been longer. He went to world war two and served and, you know, that did something to him and unbelievable fighter fought the best fighters there was and, uh, made, you know, good fighters look like a joke, like just demolished them. But, um, he fought eventually the light heavyweight champ. I forget his name. Um, he fought the light heavyweight champ and, uh, that guy was, he was lighting Joe Lewis up because he was so slick. And then in like the 13th round, Joe Lewis landed a bomb and laid him out. So anyhow, that guy told Joe Lewis, he's like, Joe, you should have let, you could have let me win. I would have let you get fight for the title and get it back. He says, I let you have it for 13 rounds. He told him, but uh, it's just funny again with Joe Lewis, how he's such a dominant force. And the only guy that ever gave him a run, when he was at his, uh, you know, at his top was a smaller man, like 175 pounder or so. Yeah. One thing I wanted to point out, Uncle Brian says, Larry Holmes never got the respect that he deserved. Very That's funny. true. Yeah. Very true. Good job. Larry, Larry Holmes was uh, Muhammad Ali's uh, sparring hard. partner. And he knocked out, uh, well, he knocked him down a few times. He knocked uh, Ali down. And he fought Tyson well past his prime. He did it for a payday. Um, but Larry Holmes in the early 80s, there was nobody touching Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes was, he's actually from my area. He's from Pennsylvania. And a real tough boxer and had really, really, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, he when he fought Jerry Cooney, that was his, you know, that was the big fight, you know, with the great white hope and this and that. Yeah. And he destroyed him in like, I think it was, you know, a couple of rounds and 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 Jerry Cooney was gone. Jerry Cooney uh, was a good fighter, too, because I think he just came off a devastating knockout of Ken Norton, who was a hell of a fighter, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's another thing, too. I remember watching an old video that they had um uh fraser ali and um i forget the third boxer and all three of them said that the hardest hitting boxer that they ever fought like was ken norton oh really yeah ken norton george foreman said the hardest hitter he ever faced was jerry cooney really yeah he had a hell of a left hook that guy big irishman yeah. too right so but, yeah, uh, no, he was a he was a big guy. I mean, and, you know, Jerry Cooney for the the small time, the small window that he had, yes. he he really uh, was a was a great boxer. You can't take it away from him. No, he um, did good. Yeah, he did good. Well, Ken but, Norton. Uh, Ken Norton. Ken, broke. Ken Norton was one of the hardest punchers that I've heard from Muhammad Ali, George, uh, Joe Frazier, um, and I can't guys. remember the third fighter. 
And they said, yeah, no, Ken Norton, he was a great, great fighter. I don't think he was a smart fighter. I think he was more of a boxer, like just, just a puncher, just a fighter, you know, looking to knock somebody out. He wasn't the smartest boxer in the ring, but uh, a hell of a puncher. And, you know. He broke Ali's uh, jaw, right? Yeah. He was the one that broke uh, Ali's jaw in that fight. A guy yeah. I think that would hit harder than all those guys we were just talking about is probably Sonny Liston. You know, a lot of people underestimate Sonny Liston because of the whole hype between, you know, because a lot of people know, you know, Sonny Liston was owned by the mob. Yeah. Um, you know, he took dives for the mob. Oh, yeah. Um, those, those, and then, I, I agree with those fights. I think something was fishy yeah. there. And, you know, he uh, – even his death was mysterious, you know. They said he was on drugs and blah 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 blah. And you know, he took a dot. He he was which fight was he with Ali? The second fight that he didn't come uh, out. Phantom Punch. Yeah, the second fight. Yeah, and, and you know, it was like Ali barely grazed him. Yeah, that, that that fight was uh, yeah that I that was a fix. And um, another reason I'll say that is the referee from that fight was Jersey Joe Walcott. Yeah. Jersey Joe Walcott was a hell of a great heavyweight, and he was the referee for that fight. That guy has been in more fights and seen more fights than anybody, and he thought it was a slip. Yeah. Like, he didn't even start counting. He thought it was a friggin' slip. So yeah. Jersey Joe Walcott standing right there sees it and thinks it's a slip, it it's it was something fishy about it. And I don't know. Um, I've, I've looked into this lots, and... I've heard that uh, like those guys Ali was hanging out with at the time threatened Liston. I heard that Liston said he got part of Ali for all his fights after that. Um, there was something something funny about it, that's for sure. But uh, yeah. he was a uh, Sonny Liston was actually a pretty good boxer too. He was extremely durable, and he could is a hell of a puncher. He had like an eighty four inch reach, and he was only six feet tall. Like his reach was sick, like a Six foot nine guy, and he was uh, strong, a strong, strong, really. They don't even know he hitting puncher. Oh, he was like, I want to, I want to put him with like George Foreman in terms of he can, he can take one punch can knock anybody yeah. out. George That's Foreman, when he was younger, sp sparred with him, and he said that uh, that was one of the few guys he ever went in the ring with that was stronger than him, Sonny Liston. Yeah, no, Sonny Liston. You know he his his uh, reputation and his the way he went down in history is sad because you know there was drugs involved and the mob and all this stuff but there was nobody tougher than Sonny Liston. You know Sonny Liston was a a great great real fighter in terms of you know one punch he can knock anybody yeah. out. See and. So, uh... Like he fought that Cleveland Williams and they just destroyed each other. And it shows how durable Sonny Liston was like, and Sonny Liston, they don't even know what year he was born. And yeah, they have no idea what year he was born. They said he was however old when he fought Ali. I think he was actually over 40 years old. And if you look at the fight, he doesn't look like a young man. He looks, you know, he looks like, a, yeah, he looks like an older guy. See when that fight happened, um, George Chevallo, our Canadian heavyweight, he was a top contender at that time. And if Liston won that fight, the second fight, the Phantom Punch, Chevallo was supposed to get Liston. And if Ali won, Floyd Patterson was supposed to get uh, Muhammad Ali. So when the fight, like the Phantom Punch happened, our George Chevallo, the Canadian guy, he was front row. He jumped a gate or jumped a fence and went after Ali and told him because he was standing right there. He seen it was. He said, "Sonny Liston's a tough guy and he ain't going down from no friggin' phantom punch." And he told <laughs> he told Ali that he, he lipped him off, and uh, that's exactly what he told him because he was pissed off because he was supposed to get a shot at the title, and uh, he told him, "You fight me, I won't go down from no phantom punch." So eventually, they did, and he was the first guy to go the distance with Ali for when yeah. he was uh, champ. So, I, you know, I, a lot of people, you know, it's easy. You know, I mean, I don't know if people saw the first fight between 
um, Ali and Frazier. I mean, I saw, and people can, can go back and watch that fight. You know, Frazier had one punch. He was a, a southpaw, and he was. No, he just, wasn't. He wasn't a southpaw. Who? Fra Joe Frazier? No, he was a right-handed fighter, but all he threw was left hook. Always, he had that bobbing, weaving style. Oh, okay. I always thought he was a, a southpaw, no. just because that's all he threw was that yeah, left no, hook. That was no, that left he thought, hook. He fought orthodox, but he always did that bob and weave and came up with that left hook about a million times. I enjoy yeah. watching him fight. I really enjoy that style. I saw him. I saw him throw a punch on Ali and lifted him off the canvas. That's how hard he hit. Oh, Ali. he was, yeah. You know, Joe Frazier. I mean, and if you go back to the history, he Ali took him apart in terms of you know in the pre he was like uh, he called him. Um, or the gorilla and all that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. He just destroyed him in the media and, and just, you know, hyping the fight. And nothing against Ali. Ali was a great fighter. He had a lot of heart. You know, one of the more... I think Ali had one of the most biggest hearts in terms of fighting. It would just not go down. And I think that was one of the reasons why he got sick the way he did because he just wouldn't go down. You know, he fought way past his prime. Again, um, yeah. He got, I took a lot of beatings when, when he was past his prime, but I mean, I saw Frazier hit him so hard that you saw him go off, off the canvas. Yeah. And yeah, that's not easy. I mean, I'm no big boxer, uh, to say the least I've been in the, in the ring. I've, I've trained, but I mean, you, you punch somebody and you throw the, you, you get them off the ground. You're fucking doing something right. No, he could he could punch. He had a good left hook. Like uh, yeah, our our when our Canadian guy George Chavello fought Frazier, um, uh, Frazier stopped him in four. Not that he got knocked down or nothing. Our guy never got knocked down in ninety six fights, but he broke his orbital socket and cheekbone with the left hook. And he says at the time he was kind of pissed off because he wanted to continue fighting because he was actually ahead in those four rounds, and. Yeah. Uh, he says going back in time, he's very, very glad that that fight was stopped because he was able to get surgery and continue to fight on where um, if it would have continued, he probably he would have lost because he couldn't see out of one eye and it would have been probably unfixable after. But no, Frazier was, I think, a pretty honest fella too. Like um, when he was champ, he didn't really feel like the champ because of the way Ali's belts got taken and all that. No. Ali and him were friends when Frazier was champion. He says Ali had no money. He was giving all his money to all these frigging leeches around him. Frazier was giving him money. Yeah. Yeah. Were, yeah. When, when he was banned. Yeah. When he gets his license back, he just backstabbed the shit out of him. And I think Frazier to his last days kind of, wasn't a big fan of him because of that. And I can't say as I blame him. I don't blame him either, you know, because, I mean, you see how they ended. I mean, you know, Frazier was living above a gym, you know, in the last years of his life. And, you know, Muhammad Ali was, you know, living the life of a millionaire. And, you know, listen, it, it really depends on how smart a fighter is, how he takes care of his business. Yeah. And also the luck of, you know, I guess, you know, taking care of your money, this, that, and the other. But um, I can't say that, like, I agree with you. I can't say that I blame that that Frazier wasn't a fan of uh, of Ali just because he did help him when he was down, when he was out. And, you know, he really turned his back. But I think it was part of the, the hype, you know, because, I mean, some of the greatest fights was between, you know, Ali and – and Frazier when, you know, the thrill in Manila was, yeah. um, what was the, the, the rematch for, for that was the uh, third fight. The thrill in Manila was the third. The one. Thrill of, okay. Yeah. I, I didn't want to mix that up fight the, between him and, uh, and Foreman Ali. It was so Foreman. bloody hot. No, no, you're thinking of, uh, Zaire, the, yes. Rumble in the yes. jungle. Yeah. Um, Rumble in the jungle. The fight between Frazier and the third one, it was like 120 degrees Fahrenheit. They had to switch referees halfway through that fight. And they stopped it going into the 15th. 
uh, Frazier's corner through the towel in because Frazier was actually only could see out of one eye. He was blind out of completely blind his whole career. And I think that's kind of why he had that style is because I think he can only see on one side. And yeah, uh, I believe it. I that believe it. kind of had something to do with it, but Frazier is saying, don't you stop it. Don't you stop it. But they threw the towel in. Cause they're like, you're only, you only have one eye as it is. And your one eye is bad shape. And if they wouldn't have stopped it, Frazier would have won that fight because Ali got up and collapsed the friggin' heat stroke. All Frazier would have had to do is go out there and he would have ended up winning that third fight. So yeah, I I, I've, I've watched fight. that fight many times. Yeah. No, there's a lot of fights that I, that I watched that, um, that, uh, you see, I mean, there's some memorable fights that Ali, like, uh, when he fought, um, the guys were mentioning Ernie, Ernie Shavers, uh, when he fought, uh, you know Kenny Kenny Norton, uh, when he when he you know fought um, you know even Frazier, he showed a lot of heart and uh, you know Ali was a big man and he was fast, which was in that time you know. But he was style, stylistic. He was extremely flawed. It worked good for him, but you know hands down, and he always did that lean back style where oh yeah the rope a dope. Well, not even that. Like, he'd be circling around the ring and he'd be popping that jab up, kind of how he, you know, popped it up. But you punch at him and he'd lean back like this. He was almost a sucker for a follow-up. Like, uh, you know, if the guy threw one more punch, you can only go back so far. But it worked good for him. But um, if you went to a boxing gym, let's say you're starting out and you had, like, a Ali style, Mm -hmm. the coaches would be screaming at you. Like, they would not want you to... No, no. That. And exactly. that thing that was just a stupid like that was later on. That's just a dumb thing to do, you know, lay there and let the guy pound on you until he's tired. That's kind of a I don't know. I'm not a big fan of that. But when he was young in the you know, in the sixties, he was, you know, very like you said, very sharp, very fast hands, very fast feet. Um wasn't the for, biggest for a heavyweight, for yeah, a heavyweight. Wasn't the biggest fast. puncher, but he was like he was hittable though, because like um oh he took a lot of punishment. Well, even when he was young, so there was a fight I actually think he lost when he was young, and he fought a guy named Doug Jones, and Doug Jones was a light heavyweight, and Doug Jones is a very slick boxer, kind of a small 180 pounder, but very you know, very fast, slick boxer, and it was like a split decision, but I actually think Doug Jones beat him, and then he fought Henry Cooper. Henry Cooper, the British guy, uh, Commonwealth champ, he was only 180-some pounds too. And uh, Henry Cooper landed his left hook on him and just flattened him. And Henry Cooper, like I say, is only 180-some pounds. And he was a Commonwealth champ, and since Canada was Commonwealth, or or still I guess kind of is, he wouldn't fight our Canadian guy, George Chevello, because our George Chevello would have just killed him. He would have just walked through him and destroyed him because, you know, a lot of yeah. size difference and everything. He's a great fighter. If people yeah. don't, if people yeah, don't know George Chevello. He would have down like George yeah. Chevello was just like a tank. There's nothing Henry Cooper could do to keep him off. But his left hook landed on Ali. Ali barely beat the count, goes back to the corner. He's still fucked. They took a scalpel and they cut his freaking glove open. And then when he when the bell goes to come out for the next round, Angelo Dundee says, "Oh, look at his glove! Look at his glove!" And then they got to change the glove, so he bought him all that freaking time. Yeah. Where if it would have happened earlier in the round, it could have been it could have been bad for him. But that's you know that's what could have happened. It, it's not what did happen. But uh, yeah, no, that's the thing about boxing, man. It's always different. It's it's ever changing. It's you know. Uh, that I think that's one of the great things that uh, boxing is 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 uh, uh, you know there's so many different factors that go into the fight, and that's why you have such great rematches. You have such great dynasties. Like um, like I wanted to touch base too on um, uh, you know there's a lot of repeats uh, in terms of boxing. Uh, you know uh, Hagler uh against sugar ray leonard or um 
Chavez uh, fighting, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, I can't think Oscar. of it right now. Oscar? Or no? Oscar, he fought him a couple of times. Um, the Irish fighter. That you, fought, that, no, um, not Ward. That fought, um, oh, what was the, the, Italian, oh, the Italian kid's name? Mickey Ward. Mickey Mickey Ward versus uh, Arturo Gatti. So Arturo Gatti. That was that was a great fight for for which one? For them. They, three times they destroyed. Well, that's the thing. He fought him three times. That's that's what I'm saying. Like when it comes to know. tough, uh, when it comes to tough, that Mickey Ward is the definition of tough. Like that was yeah. Tough he was a tough kid, kid, man. You gotta you gotta get. He had a lot of heart. He had a lot of you know. He was tough kid. He wasn't the most, He was very slow. Um, he had all right timing. He wasn't the best boxer, but durable, and his body shot was, like, the hardest. And the way he'd set it up, like, his liver shot was just nasty, just nasty. Yeah. But yeah. when it comes to tough, Mickey Ward is probably about as tough as a human can be. Yeah, um, yeah. That's that's he, that's one of the things that you look for in terms of a boxer. Right. Oh, you know, win or lose, have. he's always going to make it uh, something good to watch. But yeah. – he would, he got out like he fought his last fight with Gaddy, the third fight, and he hung his gloves up and he never he never even thought about coming back. So my hat's off to him. I hope he has some a few bucks. I think he has like a gym and trains kids now. And yeah. he yeah. actually yeah. has his, he has his wits about like he isn't slur his words. He doesn't have any issues like that. So yeah, no, and 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 the thing too, he was very close with. Uh, Gotti, yeah. yeah, with his family when Gotti passed away, uh, he was very, um, you know, showed a lot of support and love for for Gotti. They were almost friends. Uh, oh, they not were, that they, they were almost friends; they were friends. They were tied. <clears throat> they would be tied together in history for those fights. Like it was fight of the year. Um, just a blood and guts fight between two guys that don't know the meaning of quit. Yeah. Ward, like he won the first one, lost the second two. Ward in the second one got his ear. I think in the fourth round he got dropped. His eardrum exploded, and he still went the distance with a broken eardrum. Like that is that's, that's just crazy. Tough. And the third fight, and this is no bullshit. The third fight after that, he had double vision, and he had double vision throughout most of the third fight, and his. Cornerman was his brother, and he's like, "Ah, oh, just don't worry about it. Go out there and you know, go because that's just how he, <laughs> his his brother was." So yeah. when he goes to the doctor after, the doctor said, "Well, there's nothing wrong with your eyes." So what happened? The reason he had double vision, his brain shifted so hard in his skull it tore the muscles off the back of his eyes, and so the cords got stretched to go that feed the eyes they got pulled and all the muscles got tore behind its eyeballs and that's why like the amount of force it would take for your brain to shift to have that happen he was the, he, i think he it took him about a year or two he had to get operated on and everything to get his eye muscles reattached um but he's can fine now imagine? but can you still, imagine that? he'll go the distance after that like and it's just insane the, the heart that and just the, I, I don't know, man. You know, boxers are a different breed. Like, it's like they almost like pain. Like, you know, how, how do you come back from that? You know what I mean? Like, any normal person would be like, that's it, I'm done. I know, you know? Ward, uh, he's donating his brain when he passes away. They're going to autopsy it for like, uh, they do, I think, a few football players and stuff like that just for studies on you know, trauma to brain and see what it, what yeah. affects his looks like. So he seems like a pretty decent fellow though. Like very down. No, he's a good, guy. good guy. I hope he does no, very, he's a good person. very well. Yeah. Well, listen, Nolan, I'm going to go use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Uh, why don't you guys take a little bit on the comments? Can you yeah, see the okay. comments? Yeah, I can see them. All right, cool. I'll be right back, fellas. What's happening, guys? Anything you want to touch on?
Oh, I see first responders talking about that stupid fight. Um, my thoughts on that. I have respect for Mike Tyson. Like, um, I think he was a great fighter and I think he's a very knowledgeable man when it comes to boxing. And if he wanted to be involved in fighting still, he could train or commentate. There's a lot of things he could do. And I just feel, I wouldn't feel right. Even though this guy is a bum, you know, at 60 years old or close to it, you're not, you're not meant to be taking punches anymore. It would be very, very sad thing if uh, something happened to him and he started slurring his words after he got punch drunk or something like that from a fight that's meaningless. So I don't really want to see it happen. If it happens, I'll definitely watch it just to see because I'm curious, but I don't really condone that kind of thing. I think if a person wants to watch, wants to watch fighters, there's many guys at their prime um, that they can watch that'll make a lot better fight than a YouTube guy and a uh, guy that's 30 years past prime. Uh, the, the 360 is doing very well. Um, yeah, we'll see this season, but uh, no, nothing hurt it last year. So fingers crossed it's still holding up. So. Yeah, like that fight with Tyson, I don't even think uh, any athletic commission should even uh, license something like that myself. Um, if people want to watch Tyson, they could get one of his old rivals from back in the day. They could put headgear on and 18 ounce gloves and have like an exhibition for charity or something like that. That would be fine. But an actual fight at 60 years old is just foolishness and uh, just shows how dumb people are today that they would more people will tune in to watch that than you know two guys actually fighting for a belt that are at their peak i'm just talking about that stupid tyson fight thing that's happening yeah listen you know nobody's a bigger fan of tyson than i was back you know he, he i was a kid when he was a, a boxer and you know <laughs> he was he was beatable, but not many people could beat him. There was a few guys that had him figured out, like, uh, Lex you know, Lewis. like, Holy Lex, Lex, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> a lot of people don't want to admit it, but um, Holyfield figured him out him in his prime. Yeah. And he couldn't beat him. And, but, you know, Ty see, Tyson, actually, no, he was, he was passed. That was out of jail, though, right? That wasn't really. Yeah, that was post jail. Yeah, the, I don't know. I don't think he was really at his best anymore, personally. See, the thing with Tyson was that he was too caught up in his own, you know, he was the biggest thing in the world, you know. And oh, he, 100%. He was, yeah, he drank a lot. He did drugs. He did, oh, yeah. he did a lot of stuff. And, you know, that was part of his downfall. But, listen, nobody's tougher than, than Mike Tyson. Even at this age, you see him sparring. I've seen him spar. But, you know, at this age, it's it's about a money grab. And I hate to say it because yes. I have a lot of respect for Tyson. But, I mean, you know, when he fought, you know, Ray Jones Jr., I mean, he, he sparred with him. It was yes. – it was he wasn't looking to hurt him. And, he didn't no, want to hurt him. It was, it was like an exhibition match. And, you know, I, exactly. have no problem, I have no problem with that. Like I just said, if – if Tyson wanted to still fight or be involved in fighting, there's a million things he could do, you know, commentate, train. Sure. Um, he's a, if you Tyson, to have, Tyson you know, is a great historian. Oh, he's a, very knowledgeable. And if he wanted even to have a fight, he'd get one of his old rivals like Holyfield. They could put headgear on, sparring gloves, and have an exhibition and give it to charity or whatever. They could do something like that. Absolutely. Uh, but as for having a guy – like even though I don't think anything of him, like that Jake Paul guy, I think he's absolutely nothing. He's but you know, to have a younger guy try and take your head off, it would be very, like I said, uh, first responder, it would be very sad if that fight, you know, he just got hit the wrong way at six, you know, sixty years old. I don't. Yeah. 
It's yeah. not. It's your age, like, dude. Sixty is sixty. He slurred after, or his punch drunk after that. It would be very. It would Sad be a very see him get hurt. That's what happened for a bum fight. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, it'd be sad to see him get hurt. Exactly. I don't know. I think it's, and I think that guy's an idiot for wanting to fight him in the first place. Like, uh, he's obviously picking him for his name. But if yeah. he wanted to fight somebody, he, there's a million guys that would take him up on his offer right now that are real fighters, and they just demolish him. They'd walk right through that kid in one round. Like, uh, he he's a He's a joke. So, listen, I you know I'm I'm a fan of baseball, football, boxing. Those are my three loves, and you know a lot has changed since I was a kid. But one of the biggest disappointments for me in terms of boxing has been what it's turned into since the early two thousands, and I, that's why I call like the seventies and eighties and even nineties like the golden age of boxing. And, you know, I, I grew up with pre, you know, HBO boxing that was, you know, it, you saw a lot of great fights with HBO and yeah. you, you saw yeah. it. But, you know, now <laughs> I almost feel like boxing has turned into a money grab that it's just like, all right, what's the big, you know. It's like a sh- entertainment or a show compared to. Yeah, uh, yeah, because they, just- they got. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut no, you off. No, no, go ahead. I agree. I agree with what no, you. No, no, no. Just, just you know, they're fighting YouTube guys. They're fighting MMA guys. Like, it's not really boxing. It's, it's, it's a, uh, it's just to make money. It's, like it's not really it's almost like wrestling. Like, uh... exactly. That's what it's turned into, in my opinion. And yeah. you know, maybe my age or whatever. No, I, I, I saw, I saw real boxing, and I appreciate real boxing. And um, boxing is an art. Boxing is not something that, you know, you just pick up and you just learn. And, um, you know, you got to be a tough motherfucker to fight, you know, and you got to have a lot of heart and you have to have a lot of uh, a lot of things that not many people possess. And people don't know that. Um, well, for sure. You know, uh, a hard chin, a, a, a heart, you know, the, the will to get up after you got your ass whooped. You know, that's there's certain intangibles that not many people possess. Um, you know, there's people that will take one punch and they they just get thrown into another reality that they'll they'll never mess with somebody again. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, getting punched in the face is tough. Yeah. And you know, I, I I've been there and Nolan's been there. You know, it's not fucking easy. You know, it's it's one of the toughest things in the world to I feel to come back from. Oh, and you have to have a lot of heart to 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 do that. Yeah, and, you know. I always tell people like, okay, you go to a boxing gym and you see a guy. So I've spent lots of time in the gym. And you see a guy in the gym and he looks good and he's lighting people up and you know, holy shit, you think this guy is good, right? Then maybe he fights the other best guy in the city and maybe he wins. Then it goes to the state, you know. Maybe he even wins the you know, the champ of his best guy in his state or whatever. And you've seen him, you've sparred him, you're so impressed with him. Then he goes to a world level and fights a top 10 guy and he just gets demolished. Like he is absolutely nothing. And like he was in another, another, and another league. No. Yeah, exactly. And it happened. I see it being Canadian. I see it all the time. Cause like, you know, the, the odd guy we do get that get, gets his chance. You know, and I'm a realist. I watch these guys, and I know, like, sure, he's decent, but he's nothing on a world level, and there'll be all these kind of bag liquor types in the gym. Oh, yeah, he's going to be champ. He's going to be this. So, for example, um, there was this there's this guy named Adam Braidwood, and I've watched him fight lots, and he's a big, he's a big man. He's probably 6'4", 250, fully ripped. He can definitely punch, but I would never say he's a slick boxer. But I watched him fight lots of guys and knocked them out right like ten, from 10 feet away. He fought an MMA guy that was in the UFC, and he ended up killing him like right in my city. Yeah. Um, the guy walked out of the ring and seemed all right. He had a brain bleed, and that was it. And uh, I, I feel bad for both of them because he definitely didn't want to kill the guy. 
the guy shouldn't have been, you know, shouldn't have been messing with him. Fighter is not, shouldn't be fighting. But anyhow, it happened. Uh, no one forced him to, but very sad. So anyhow, I watched this guy, and you know, a lot of people, oh, he could be heavyweight champ, and blah 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 blah. So he ends up fighting for the Canadian heavyweight championship, which is, you know, it's nothing really. It's small country. So he fights this guy named Simon Keane. And Simon Keane is supposed to be pretty good. And they're both big men. And I watched them fight. And Simon Keane lights him up, stops him in three rounds, just bashes him up like he's nothing. So you think, holy shit, this Simon Keane guy is pretty good. So that Joseph Parker that I told you about that I like from New Zealand, he he didn't fight for a few months and he needed like a tune-up fight. So he picked that the Canadian champ, Simon Keane, to fight. So they go and fight the best guy in Canada, my country, and he gets stopped by him in two rounds. And when they were side by side, it didn't even look like the same level. It, the guy looked like he yeah, didn't he was like he had no business being in that. Yeah, he had no same. business yeah. being there. So uh like Canadian boxing is kind of gone not that it was we always used to have one or two guys that were decent but like for the heavyweights a couple years the heavyweights are so sad right now a couple years ago you know who razor reddick is obviously oh sure okay razor reddick is i think he's born jamaica but he's a canadian citizen razor reddick decided to put his gloves on and go fight for the canadian title at like 55 years old and gave the guy a damn good run for his money and you know he had hadn't fought in twenty years, so yeah. Just, and Razor Ruddick was a great fighter. Yeah, he was a great fighter, but it just goes to the guy. Yeah, it, it you shows know, you the, the, up, the couch and gives uh, you know. So it's it's quite sad, but uh, yeah, that's that's one of the things that I I I, I have to admit. Once uh, the Russian brothers started fighting Klitschko, Klitschko yeah. That was kind of the end for me in terms of boxing because <laughs> it was – he was fighting guys that – I think it was the younger brother, Klitschko. That Vladimir. Was the, Vladimir. He was fighting guys that were just punching bags, and he was just destroying people. It was just – I don't know. I, I just feel that the – not everybody wants to be a boxer anymore. And you got a lot of people from other countries that are hungry and want to be a fighter. And, and that's the only way that they can make money or whatever. And uh, you just don't see that anymore. You don't, uh, when's the last time you've seen an American boxer, you know, and I may be wrong. You know, I just feel that the golden age of boxing is past this. And, yeah. Um, I don't know. And, 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 and being such a fan of boxing, it's sad because there's there's not um, there's not anybody that you can root for anymore. It's it's you know you, you got these guys like I said before fighting YouTube guys and MMA guys yes. and you know it's I, boxing I is so much boxing is so much more than that. I think you're gonna see like I don't I think boxing isn't gonna go downhill or anything. I think you're just gonna see. Fighters from different countries, like uh, old Soviet shitholes, like Eastern Europe, you know, because it's a way, it's a way to get out of that slum, just like it used to be in the states for a guy that was born in the ghetto, very poor. It was a way for him to get out. So for heavyweights, you're going to see guys from Eastern Europe for the most part, and the smaller guys, it's Mexico, same thing. You know, that's a lot of poor Mexican people, and boxing is a way for them to get out of it you know get out of the the rut they're in but not not trying to piss any people off about the klitschkos but i think a lot of it will and don't take this the wrong way no tell me i think if he was an american you guys would have idolized him mm. i think i don't have anything against well what him. i'm trying I'm to just, say is uh yeah, no i know what you're saying he fought he fought it the best there was for a long time. And he, like you said, he beat the shit out of everyone he fought. They all look like bums, right? But those yeah. were the best guys available that, that they fed to him. And I just think, you know, a guy from Ukraine was just hard for, 
No, like, it was a uh, big man. It was a strong man. Oh, like, he was. And you can't take smart. nothing away. Like, from he's a doc. Him. He's a doctor, actually. I don't yeah, know no, he, that, he's very he intelligent. Just, yeah, and and just a uh, just a, a talented fighter. Yeah, but you know, he was. I, I don't take anything away from Klitschko. You no, know, I just was, think like before that, you had all your. You know, it was always American heavyweights, and that's the way it always for, for a hundred years. It could be you could you you're, and you then might all be of a sudden, absolutely right. This guy becomes it, and sure, like a hardcore boxing fan would sure like myself would go always tune in and watch his fights, but the casual guy, you know that you know watches once in a while, they couldn't really get into it because the you know they couldn't. They, you know, a guy from halfway across the world, they don't see anything common with, like, uh, maybe that's one of the draw. reasons. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 my take on it. I, and you know, his style wasn't the most exciting to watch or anything, but uh, I'll give him credit, he left, uh, he did very well for himself. No, he you can't take nothing away from him. He's got his brains fighter. and he's got his money, right? So, yeah, yeah. no, and, and he was a great fighter. fighter. No, no, I listen. <laughs> like I said, there's <clears throat> people love their eras of boxing. Um, I I love the uh, the time in in the in the eighties and nineties when you know there's a lot of different boxers. But you know, like you said, there's there's a lot of boxers out there that they come from different forms of life. And they literally are boxing for their lives. Like, you know, I go back to Roberto Duran. I mean, he was begging in the street as a five-year-old, you know, for food in Panama. You know, one of the poorest Latin American countries in the world. And he turned into one of the greatest boxers of his era. And, you know. Very hungry. It's kind of do or die, right? Yeah. And one of the things I love about him that he was a family man. Um, he was never caught up in drugs. He was never caught up in anything. You you hear interviews of his kids, you know, it was just about his kids, you know, and, and he didn't, he, he, he boxed to give his family a better life. And, right. you know, that's, that's something I feel that is, I think that's one of the things that my dad loved about him. Um, he did that, what he had to do to provide his family a, a better life. Um, and you know, um, I, I feel very close to that because, you know, in a different way, my father was the same way. He did a lot of things to provide for his family. And, you know, it was, it's not like a floor, you know, it's not like a Mayweather that is no. all about the hype and all about right. the money, this and that, exactly. you know, it was a boxer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's how, and that's how they always, a lot of them used to be like, um, uh, Jack Dempsey, obviously, as you know, is my all-time favorite. Jack Dempsey was dirt poor, you know, poorer than poor. Hobo, you know, young guy, 16, 17, 18 years old, riding freight cars, trying to, you know, not eating for five days, kind of shit like that. And boxing was a way for him to make, you know, make his money. And, And he was hungry, and that's why he was such a dominant force. But... At the same time, once he made it big, he was never as good anymore because he lost that. He he even said himself, like, it once happens he was, to a, lot he was of a millionaire in the twenties, you know, he became like a movie star. And this, he he forgot what he came from. He forgot what it was like not to eat for days. And and uh, like he on his record, I think he has seventy seven fights, but he says in in like what he'd actually should have had on his record is probably close to 400. And he says he used to go to mining camps and then they'd make a ring and he'd fight like the biggest miner and shit like that. Like, and it was all for a couple bucks, like nothing. But uh, he says when you haven't eaten for a few days, you'll, when you get knocked down, you'll get up. And yeah, a lot of, and a lot of guys like Joe Lewis didn't come from such a bad background is Dempsey but Joe Lewis too he came from uh you know family of six kids they they were dirt poor he actually got into boxing against like what his mother wanted his mother gave him money for violin lessons I think <laughs> really? go pay for a boxing gym 
And then when his mom talked to his violin teacher, said, how is Joe doing? His violin teacher says, I haven't seen him in six months. So she says, well, what are you doing with the money I gave you? And uh, he says he started boxing. And all his mom said, if you're going to box, you better be good. <laughs> he was. But he he worked for – because he, he was born in the South. And then yeah. I think as a boy, he moved to Detroit. And mm -hmm. uh, he – I know he used to deliver ice. He says that's part of why he had such power in his shoulders. Because back then everyone had ice boxes, so he used that's, to ride. That was a tough job, man. Yeah, he used to call the, call the, you know how they had those those, those things big, that held the yeah. yeah, and carry one in each arm, like as twelve year old, up apartment building steps and everything. And I think it, the, a guy he used to work with ended up being the mayor of Detroit, and. He was the same age, but he was way smaller than Joe Lewis, and he could only carry one, but they were ended up being buddies later on. And I know Joe Lewis also worked for Ford. Um, but yeah, he 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 didn't have anything handed to him, and look what he did. Like uh, you know, great great man for sport, unreal. Yeah. You know, he served in World War II, he donated millions probably to the war effort. Um, and he was just, just such a great, a great man. Yeah, like even after his his you know his time in boxing, he was broke. He got a job in Vegas at some. Something. I think it was Sinatra. Sinatra gave he, him. A, oh, Sinatra loved him. Yeah, but yeah. he got a job in Vegas at some hotel just to stand at the door because people would go to that hotel because Joe Lewis is at the door. Yeah, and yeah. he had which a gambling is sad. problem. Which is he sad. had a gambling problem. He blow all his mo money on the casino he was working at. And the pit boss would be say to like the waitresses or whatever, here, go give this to Joe, get a bunch of money. It doesn't look good if the champ's losing, stuff like yeah. that. But uh, yeah. he was foolish with his money, but uh, that's his issue. But he was always a big name. Yeah, no, Joe Lewis was a great, great, great fighter. And, you know, it's unfortunate that not all of them can – uh retire as great fighters and live that great life that they earned because nobody earned it more than joe lewis but unfortunately like you said they either blow it or people rob from them or they're just not good in terms of uh handling their money yeah and and you, you got to give uh sugar ray leonard credit in terms of that because he was very good at that um you know, Sugar Ray Leonard is, I think he's probably one of the most, um, you know, next to Tyson, but Tyson lost all his money. Sugar Ray Leonard, the, the time that he was boxing, I think he made the most of his money and he kept his money because he was a smart boxer. So, you know, you got to think of it in that sense. You know, I don't, not that I don't respect Sugar Ray Leonard. I just don't think that he was as great as boxer as he was in terms of the hype of being a Sugar Ray Leonard, but, you know, you got to give the guy credit. At least he hang, hung, hung on to his money and, you know, he was able to, um, you know, not be broke like a Joe Lewis or right. a Tyson, you know, that. So, you know, it's a lot of dynamics. It's fascinating when you think about it, all the different things that <clears throat> boxing has. And that, I think that's one of the things that makes people come back um, you know, the next great fighter that comes along, you know, people are going to respond to, you know, it might not happen now, might not happen for a few years, but, you know, when that next great fighter comes along, um, people are going to respond to it, you know, uh, especially, uh, people that are, are, are boxing fans and, you know, it, especially now where we, the time that we live, you know, it, it could blow up a lot bigger than it was in the past but you know i don't know i think that's one of the great things about boxing maybe that's one of the things that i love about it you know is that anybody can come out and and literally take over the world just just for the, the uh you know the um the ability and the heart you know i think the heart is the biggest thing i think that's one of the things like the rocky movies made people gravitate to oh, that because for sure for sure because of the heart that you need to to to, to be champion and the, the tough things that you have to go through and stuff and you know i i just um 
you know, I, it's, it's going to sound silly, but when I was going through the two police academies, you know, I had this little disc player and I had the soundtrack of Rocky three and I used to Uh run, I used to run five, six miles with, you know, the theme of Rocky three and I used to box with it. And, you know, that's, that's how I stayed, you know, it has to do a lot with your heart and a lot with, um, you know, it, 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 boxing is that certain sport that takes over. Um, I want to say the, your emotions in terms of, you know, Hey, listen, if I fight hard enough, I can get to where I want to be. And, uh, I, I think it's one of the great things, you know, as, as much as it's diminished, I feel in the last few years, last several years, it still has that dynamic and that anybody can, can, uh, if they I, feel, if they have the heart enough that they can, they can achieve what they want. If you I want think, it bad enough. I think though myself, the new generation, kind of the arrogance and the cockiness, you know, the way they talk shit and stuff like that. I think a lot of older boxing fans that probably watch it since they were, you know, in diapers just kind of don't watch it anymore because they don't like the way it's turning. Like for instance, your father was, you know, if he was around today, he'd be an older guy and he watched boxing his whole life. Do you think he could really, would want to tune in to the guys nowadays, even if they are great fighters, just the way, no. you know, they're caught, you know what I mean? You'd say that's bullshit. That's no way to act. Yeah. It's not a professional. Yeah. And I can't, I'm not, you know, I'm only 40, 41 years old. I'm even seeing it that way. Like uh, I just think it's too much social media bullshit and just too much acting like a freaking clown. But yeah, I don't know the, like, it used to be such a big sport. There used to be, you know, stadium fights like, uh, like Dempsey fought in Yankee Stadium, hundred thousand people. Like that was yeah. huge back then, and even till twenty years ago, there was, you know, a big following with people of all ages. But now I just see the older, older generation not watching, like people that are, you know. 70 80 years old not really tuning in anymore because they just can't they can't back somebody yeah no there's a lot there's a lot (laughs) there's a lot to it man and you make great points in terms of you know boxing 20 years ago was way different than it is now it's it's actually i feel it's 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 turned to 180 I don't feel that it's the same intense. Uh, I, I don't know. It's just not what it was. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm getting older. Everybody has their era. Everybody has their their time that they're into it. I don't know. I think you know? like Me- I, I've always been a fan of Mexican fighters, and I think part part of the reason I like them is because Mexican fighters are no, usually no bullshit. You know what I mean? They no, And they have a great style, man. Yeah, but they come in, Mexican. they come in, they don't have a rapper. They have a mariachi band. You know what I mean? Like, uh, they come in with a sombrero and a mariachi band to come in and, you know, they'll be fighting some guy with gold teeth that thinks he's the, you know, a gangster, blah, 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 blah. Talk all this shit in the press conference. The Mexican doesn't do stuff like that. They just say, okay, we'll see what happens. And usually and he the fucking hands his ass beat the shit out of him. Yeah. yeah. There was a guy from Argentina named uh, Marcos Madonna. And he was like that. He was just a cold, you know, he didn't talk no shit, nothing. But this guy was a badass. Like you could tell he was not the kind of guy you wanted to screw with. And there would be guys talk so much shit to him. And then the fight would happen, and he would just destroy him. He's one of the few guys that should have, on paper, like the first fight with Floyd Mayweather, he pounded on Floyd Mayweather. Like, he pounded on him good. He should have won that fight. The rematch, Floyd Mayweather won because he's the kind of fighter that's – I'm not a big fan of him at all, but he's smart. He could learn from the first fight, and that's why he was so dominant in the second where Madonna did the same thing you know, try to just pressure him and just pound, pound, pound. But, uh, yeah. 
California. Like, well, what's up? No, no, I just wanted to say hello to a few guys that, that came in. Aussie Rob, AB, how you doing, guys? Uh, Mopar Man, uh, Mr. Swinger, Dave is in, still hanging in. I just wanted to say hi, hi to all the guys. Yeah, we, me and Nolan been caught up in the, you know, just talking boxing, and it's something we both love. So I didn't want to think that you guys uh, have been ignored. It's just, I don't know, it's just something that, you go down that rabbit hole and there's just so many different dynamics to boxing that you just, I don't know. I like you told me before, Nolan, you can talk about boxing all day. Well, because there's that, just yeah. so many things about yeah. it. It's just, it's phenomenal. See, I, your area too, boxing has died big time in your area where it used to be like a capital. Oh where yeah. There's a lot of guys from my area. Like California, it's still huge. And you have a lot of Mexicans in California, obviously. And, you know, they still have that kind of base where East Coast boxing is just like it's still around, but it's not like it used to. It's not like it used to be like, uh, no, it's not, you know, Atlantic City used to be a huge, huge thing. And there used to be lots of fighters from that area, but they're just no they're it's far just, between it's, now. It, things change. Yeah. Like we've been trying to get together. Me and Nolan have been saying we want to get together and watch a fight together because I've never been to a, an actual fight. Yeah, I've been to three. I, I I enjoyed it. And I I really want to do something uh, to get together with Nolan and, and, and catch a fight together. Um, but just there's just there's nothing going on in New Jersey. You know, it's almost dead in terms of boxing. Yeah, I even I was looking and all the fights I could see up and coming in Atlantic City were guys that I've never even heard of. Yeah. Not saying it wouldn't be, you know, it would probably be great, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Las Vegas is pretty much where all the fights are happening now or California, but. Yeah. Uh, or, or, you know, or overseas. Yeah. Or over like, for instance, now Dubai, and I'm not a fan Dubai, of yeah, Dubai, Dubai is, but Dubai, be... in my opinion, is not a, they're not into boxing. They don't, it's more of a place with a lot of money where people with a lot of money can go there buy a ringside seat to kind of show off where really they probably not even watching the fight. It's all kind of a yeah. status thing. If you, where if, you went, the... if you went in California, you'd have some, you know, Mexican hardcore boxing fans there. And uh, yeah, it would be a, be a good time so yeah i went to manny pacquiao versus ricky hatton of england and i will say this is about british people they actually follow boxing a lot they were take care dave see you dave three three quarters of the crowd there at mgm grand was probably from england like everywhere was british accents and that was an expensive fight i think a ringside seat like right at the ring was a hundred grand for a ticket. So I, I think I paid, uh, I paid 1500 for my ticket. And I was like up in the nosebleeds, like, uh, you know, three quarters of the way up for 1500 bucks. And it was only two rounds. Like it only went two rounds. Manny Pacquiao had him out in two rounds. So <laughs> it was, yeah. it was yeah, kind yeah. of shitty. And then I went to, I think the night before, that was the first time I ever went. That was 2009. Um, so that was on Saturday night. On Friday night, I had nothing to do. And I found some fights that were at the Hard Rock Hotel in uh, Vegas. So I went there with my buddy and we go to get tickets like on fight night. And they said, well, what kind of tickets do you want? I said, well, what's the best you have? They said third row. It was televised fight and everything. And uh, it was 200 bucks, so I said, right on. So we're sitting third row, it was televised fight. It had Urbano Antalon was on it, Alfonso Gomez was on the card. It was pretty much an old Mexican card. That was the yeah. best live fights I've ever seen in my life. It was unreal, unreal. Like, third, I was glad I was third row because the people in front of me were getting covered in blood, the ring girls were getting toweled off. It was just insane. It was a great night, and uh, well, we've talked about bucks. So, 
we've talked about that before. Some of the best fights that we've seen have been the undercards to, you know, fights that were overhyped and got, you know, weren't as uh, lived up to the hype, but the under the undercards right. yeah, were, you better, were one of the best Yeah, you fights. better watch them because the main event might be over before you go. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, you know, uh, it's one of the things that, that uh, I really enjoy is, and, you know, it's the up-and-comer, the hungry guys. Yeah, that that you see, you know, come in and 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 you know they're they're twenty twenty years old, twenty one years old, and you know they're just starting to box, and you know they're they're not up to their full potential, but they got the heart, and they're still you know, hungry. That's yeah. that's what I miss, you know, seeing, and and that's one of the things that I enjoyed. You know, I remember watching it with my dad, or you know, and he would, you would be talking about two guys at unknowns but it would be one of the best fights that you would see. And then when you saw the main event, you were, it was almost a letdown, you know, because of how good the fight was. Like, that's one of the things that I remember, you know, watching with my dad, how how great that was because, you know, they're hungry. They want to fight. They want, they want to make a name for themselves. Like, you know, that's nothing beats hunger in any form, you know, any sport, anything. You know, when you really want something, you're going to show it and people are going to enjoy it, you know. So that's just one of the things that I take away from watching because me and my dad used to watch a lot of a lot of boxing together for a long time. And uh, it, it was great. And one of the best memories I remember was watching the reaction that my dad would oh, have I, with certain boxers. Injured, eh? Yeah, because, you know, like I told you, my uncle was a boxer. He had a certain um, – my dad wasn't a boxer like his like his brother, but he was involved in that, that all that right. stuff. So he, he was a big fan of boxing. And, uh, you know, it rubbed off on me. And, um, you know, it was just a, a, a great experience that I cherish, you know, just from experiencing that since I was a kid. I mean, you know, I remember the earliest fight I think I remember was probably uh, was Hagler, uh, Hagler um, and Duran. Yeah. You know, in 83, I was 10 years old. Man. You know, and my father, you know, I, I think he he took me up to uh, to the old hometown that we used to live in. And, you know, him, my mom, and, you know, we met up with a bunch of people and we, we watched it on circ and closed circuit television because at that time there were, it wasn't on H on HBO. It was, you know, so I remember that. So it was, a, I, it was, a, big, it was a big thing. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's one of the, that's one of the biggest earliest memories that I can remember in terms of boxing. And you know maybe that's why I love you know Roberto Duran so much. I don't know. Maybe because um, it was your first big, you know, experience. Yeah. With it, right? yeah, that's you know I thought about it today when we were getting ready to do the live. You know, like what's my biggest memory? And w that's one of the things I wanted to ask you. What is your most favorite fight ever? Do you have a favorite fight that you that you watch live that you? Um, I'll be the really most important like the fight i was most excited about was the british guy ricky ricky hotton against floyd mayweather because ricky hotton to me just the way he comes off he's just like you know poor guy from manchester and you just see him with his family and it's just like a you know normal just a normal guy, you know, he likes playing darts and drinking beers and just, just the most down to earth person you'd ever find. So I kind of, you kind of, I don't know, I could kind of see share common ground with him where Floyd Mayweather is the exact opposite kind of, uh, you know, the kind of guy I don't like, like just, uh, you know, show off. Don't get me wrong. Extremely skilled athlete, everything about him, but just, it was almost like good versus evil. So I remember we all, I was probably 25, 26. All my buddies 
watch the fights at the time and they all were going for Ricky Hatton. So we go to this bar and then these crews of other guys come in and they were all for Floyd Mayweather. It was almost fights in the bar before the fight even started. <laughs> and uh, to me, it was like good versus evil, but no, Floyd ended up winning. But uh, I thought the fight was very, the way it was refed, I thought it was very favoring Floyd Mayweather. Um mm-hmm. Ricky Hodden's a very short arm guy. He's an inside fighter. And anytime they got in close, no clinching or nothing, and they're working on the inside, the referee would be going, break, break, break. And uh, he just kind of took the fight away. The way the ref did it, he kind of took the took his only you know tool kind of away by doing that. So anyhow, it's all in the past, but I was pretty disappointed when I walked out of there. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I mean, there's so many fights that I've seen, you know, because <clears throat> time passes, you know, memories fade. And, you know, there's a lot of great boxing that I've watched that I've missed. But one that really sticks out on me, and I'm not going to say it's the best fight I've ever seen, but one that really sticks out on me, and maybe it's because of the time of my life that was very crucial. I was going to law school. I was uh, not sure what I wanted to be, but I went to my uncle's house, and the biggest thing was Tyson Holyfield won. Right. And that was really memorable. That sticks out in my mind, and maybe it's because of the time of my life that I was in, but that was a great fight. Like, you saw Holyfield take... Tyson and outboxed them. Right. Well, I think and, the reason that was a big fight is because Mike Tyson was r- pretty much right out of jail and was inactive for so long that everyone was so excited to see him return to the ring, too. Right. That was another huge yes. draw for that. So, but also, too, was that Holyfield outboxed them. If you watch that fight, he outboxed them. There, a lot of people think that Tyson was this wrecking ball that was just destroyed him. No, he even said that there was a, um, I want to say, um, there was a boxer that he said that he wouldn't beat if he was in his prime that he fought after his prime. I don't know if it was, um, Lex Lewis, maybe. No, no, Nolan. Uh, Oh God. What was his name? Um, Oh, God, I can't think. Not Razor Ruddick. Um, there was a boxer. I don't. I, I want to say Larry Holmes. I think that he said that he wouldn't be able to beat Larry Holmes if he was fighting Larry Holmes in his prime. Well, Larry Holmes in his prime would have, you know, kept him at bay with his job. He would have had his work cut out for him for sure. I think, I think that's – and guys, don't quote me, but I think that's what sticks out in my mind. I think that Tyson said – he wouldn't be able to beat Larry Holmes in his prime. And, you know, that just goes to show you the dynamic in terms of boxing, you know, who's in their prime, who is, and who's fighting for money, who's not fighting for money, who's coming up and up and this and that. You know, it, it's just, uh, you know, it's like the world, you know, it's ever going. It's, it's not black and white. If, if anything, it's it's the last thing it yeah. is is black and white. And he I think that's exactly, one of the great things about it. David said exactly who I was thinking, Riddick Bowe. That would have that I thought Riddick Bowe was Razor Riddick. Oh wait, no, Riddick Bowe, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I thought Riddick uh Bo was a damn good fighter. He and, was. Uh, it's too bad it that's a long time, but it's too bad that fight fighting. didn't happen. Another guy, because you know, I watch the old fights on ESPN Classics once in a while. That was better than I remember him. Is that Polish guy Andrew Galata? If he wasn't so fucked in the head, yeah, he could have done. Uh, he was actually a good fighter. Like the shit he pulled off in that Riddick Bow fight with the low blows and getting disqualified. Oh my god, they he was were a fool. He was winning every single round. Why he did that is beyond me. What an idiot! It was blatant, blatant. Well, what my buddy, because my, my good buddy's from Poland, he said that. Uh, he was a boxer in Poland, but he was going to go to jail. It was uh, probably communist at the time. 
and he was getting drunk and beating the shit out of people in the streets and stuff like that. <laughs> and then like he decided, yeah, and then he decided, oh, I'll just move to sneak out through Germany, get into the States, <laughs> go to Chicago, because that's where all the Polish go is Chicago, and uh, become a truck driver. That was, his, that was his dream. Go to the States, become a truck driver. Yeah. Well, I guess he would decided to go into a box gym there because he already boxed from back home. And he just dominated everyone in the gym, and he hadn't even trained. So he ended up getting convinced to become a pro fighter, and he did very well till his, you know, his opponents were top notch. And it's like if the guy didn't go down in a couple of rounds, well, I'm just gonna hit him, hit him in the nuts. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that was bad, man. That was bad. But uh, yeah. he was actually a pretty good fighter. He just. Uh, was mentally unstable and it's uh yeah. it's too bad yeah and and there's a lot of stuff i mean oh my god we can do three or four um lives about <clears throat> what happened to uh alturo Gotti. yeah what happened to hector macho camacho what happened to you know a lot of boxers that you know died of mysterious um you know, even Sonny Liston. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of boxers that, you know, they, their demise was very shadowed with, you know, um, just mystery, you know, and, and not, you know, boxing wasn't the, the cleanest sport and, and it, far from it. And, you know, you don't know what happens to, to people afterwards. And, you know, that's another that's another point that you can get into, too. I mean, I still wonder what, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, Gotti is a wife. I is, think that's what happened for sure. I think that's what happened with Gotti. Uh, I think that his his fa her family killed him. Um, Hector Macho Camacho, I think it was like a drug deal gone bad. I'm not really mm -hmm. sure. You know, it's there's a lot of tragedy too with with boxing. Um, then you see like guys like uh, you know Pryor. You know, the poor guy can barely speak. You know, a full sentence, and it's sad to see him because he was a great. He had a big heart, great heart. Uh, I really think that he would have if if Sugar Ray Leonard would have would have taken that fight. I think Pryor would have beat Sugar Ray Leonard. Probably just because in of that his, prime, just because of his style. Um, yeah, I think he would have took him apart. I think that that's one of the things I don't like about Sugar Ray Leonard. I think he dodged Aaron Pryor because Aaron Pryor, I think he would have beat Sugar Ray Leonard in his prime. Um, but you see how, you know, that ended for him, you know. So <laughs> it's life, man. You know, life never ends up the way that you think that it's going to end up. It's far from it, actually. So, you know, uh, I, I think it's a great subject. You know, I love it. I know Nolan loves it. I think he's a he's a much better uh, student of it. He knows much more about it, the history. Um, but, I, you know, I, I, that's one of the reasons why we did this live was uh, just to touch on it. And I hope the guys that came in and, and, and you know, talked uh, a little boxing with us, they enjoyed it. I'm anxious to see if people people enjoy it and, and leave positive comments because it is a great sport. It, it has a great history and it's real life, uh, you know, different upbringings, different corners of the globe, different um, uh, circumstances, you know, it's not like you're going to have two people in their prime, you know, fighting. It's not black and white. It's real life, you know. So, you know, I, I think it's I think it's really, really, uh, really, really rich subject if you're into boxing, you know. And not everybody is. But, you know, I, I think from the comments, a lot of people enjoyed it. Uh, they had a lot of comments, and I apologize that, we didn't touch more on, on people's uh, uh, comments, but it's just you get caught up in it and you just start talking about it that, you know, it's kind of hard to keep the train of thought going, you know what I mean? So 
I don't know, Nolan. I mean, did did you enjoy talking? Oh, about, uh, always, like I said, I I could talk boxing all day and night. So no, I had a good time. Yeah, man. Uh, I really, I really want to do another one. I think maybe. I know we spilled into like heavyweights, and we kind of went off the welter yeah, the, the middleweights. We always do that. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, hey, but that's right. the way it goes. You know, yeah. that's I like that. You know, yeah. I like to be, um, you know, where wherever the the live takes us, it takes us. So, <laughs> you know, I'd like to do something on the heavyweights in the future. Um, and explore something. I'm going to talk to Nolan and see what, yeah, what he sure. wanna, what he wants to do. Maybe we can do something more of people in the past because there's so many great fighters. I mean, I have about 15 fighters written down here that we didn't even touch on <laughs> um, because there's just – it's such a rich sport. There's just – you know, you can talk about one fighter for a half hour, Yeah, you know. So, no, it's always neat to think of – uh, for me, I always think of guys from different generations. What would have happened? Like, that's yeah. that's what I always think. And uh, yeah, and, and I'll be honest. I love, like you said before. You know, I watch you know old fights and enjoy them just as if they were happening today, because they were such good fights. Yeah, and you know what? Sometimes I don't know why I do it. I will watch an old fight that I know I've watched it. Uh, you know, tons of times. Mm-hmm. And the guy I like, the guy I like loses, and I know he loses. But when I'm watching it, it's still like I'm thinking in my head, <laughs> like he has a chance. I don't. Know. <laughs> I know. I know what you're saying. I know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love it, man. It's it's a great. I think it's a great subject that uh, a lot of people don't. And hey, listen, I could be wrong, but on YouTube, I've I. I see a lot of boxing, but I don't see not a, a, a not a lot of analysis, especially older boxing. There's uh, one channel I haven't watched it for a while. I think it's called Rummy's Corner, and the guy kind of does and he does it like professional, like documentaries on uh, fights and different fighters, and. He, his stuff would be good enough to be on like HBO and he's just a YouTube guy, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's pretty cool, man. It's, uh, I, I enjoyed watching him. See, uh, uh, yeah. See that comment. So he's talking about, Take bare care, knuckle. AB. yeah, he's talking about bare knuckle and the bare knuckle boxing is kind of making a, a comeback, a comeback personally. I did, I've watched it. I'm not a, the biggest fan. I'd probably watch it over UFC, but I still like glove boxing. And the reason I don't like the bare knuckle, it's like as soon as a jab lands, the guy's cut. And then the fight ends up land, you know, getting stopped on cuts because, yeah, you know, it's just the way it is. And I don't know. Well, that's the I nature guess, of it. I Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's not uh, – I'll watch it, but it's not really, it's not really the same to me. It's it's definitely different. So, yeah. But, but a lot of yeah. fights uh, in it get stopped on cuts where, if they had gloves on, it wouldn't you know it wouldn't go that route. So, yeah. No, that's true. Yeah, cuts better than brain damage. Yeah. So you, what brother. he's trying to say is, if you have gloves on and you're repeatedly getting hit. The gloves cushion take the more, blow. more punishment. Yeah. yeah, to take more punishment where if it was bare knuckle, it would shut you off. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. A lot of broken hands, and it's definitely it's definitely different. But, uh, yeah. No, That's I, where it I, started, I, though. Yeah. Yeah, but even John L. Sullivan himself, the first heavyweight champ, that he's the one that transitioned from bare knuckle to gloves. He even preferred wearing gloves. So, yeah. but the gloves they used to wear were like five ounces, you know, very thin horse hair. Yeah, it was like but, nothing. Yeah. yeah. Very rich sport. I think it's, there's a lot more to, to talk about. Uh, we haven't touched, I don't think we've even scraped the surface, but uh, I'd, I'd really love to uh, follow up on it sometime in the near future no and uh, hopefully people enjoy it i've i always love talking about boxing 
No, me too. And, and I always love hearing other people's opinions about um, different boxers of different eras. So, you know, I, I, I'd love to do it again. I don't know about you, but I, I definitely think that uh, we should do another one. And hopefully, sure. uh, hopefully the people respond and, and, and want to. So we'll leave it up to you guys. Leave it in the comments. See if you want us to talk more about boxing. I, mean, I know Nolan and me will – more than be happy to, to talk for, more about boxing and it's something different it's something fresh and new and you know something i don't think that many people talk about it so um you know <clears throat> we've gone for a couple hours and i mean nolan i think uh i think we've you know i think we did a pretty good job you know we're not Bert Sugar, or, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, Howard <laughs> Yeah, but at least we we had a good time and and talked and and you know interacted with the fellas and guys. As always, we're so happy that that you guys come on, like AB, David Pacheco, um, you know, all the usual guys, Mopar Man, Mister Swinger, uh, Uncle Brian before Aussie Rob, uh, Dave. R and D, uh, everybody that came on, and and it's cool that you know it's a few guys. Paul, obviously, um, I've been DMing with him on Instagram a lot. Kenny, uh, Uncle Brian, so you know all the guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoyed um, catching up with with Nolan and and talking something about other than cars and and just uh, you know just something different that we both are very passionate about. So um, with that, Nolan, if you have anything else, brother, I think we'll oh, always good. We'll do it again. Looking forward to doing it again. Absolutely. So fellas, you know, leave it in the comments. Tell us what you want to talk about. Tell us, you know, if we missed anything, I'd love to hear the feedback if you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, there's always boxing. There's always a, a, a plethora of stuff. To, there's always, there's, I think it's a subject that we'll never be able to run out of content because yeah, I yeah. think it's, it's a very rich sport for a very long time. Oh, so, God, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So guys, you know, everybody have a great night. If your uh, your religion is that I hope everybody has a great Easter. Nolan, I hope you have a great holiday. Um, you know, so with that guys, uh, we'll leave you and, uh, you know, everybody have a great weekend and we'll catch up with you guys soon. Have a good night, guys. All right, brother. Take care, Nolan. You too, well. Nice talking to you as always. Always, always, brother. Okay. Have All a good right. one. You Bye. too. Take care.